Hello, hello, Leo. Welcome to your mid-2020 overview kind of check-in. We're going to see how the rest of 2020 is going to go, and this is also your August reading as well. Now, since this is technically your season's reading, I am going to be pulling a bonus card just for you, so make sure you stay tuned until the very end so that you can get that. And as always, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Make sure you check me out on Instagram at Onyx Healing for more readings and more good things from me. If you would like to work with me, please check out the description box. All of the decks will be listed in there as well. And make sure you sign up for my newsletter if you would like even more goodies. So just check in on all my content. I deliver it to you and you have access to it all. So I'm going to lay this spread out and then we will get started. Okay, let me explain this reading. So this is the timeline for the rest of 2020. So it's broken down into quarters. They're about six weeks each. Of course, we're talking about time, so it is a little bit more fluid in this general reading. So just bear that in mind. But yes, these are six week increments and it'll go from, you know, July is over here, December's over here for 2020. And I'm gonna be filling in the details with another deck and see what else is going on. And then we'll just do a short reading for August at the end and so on and so forth. But let me start with the Oracle card. So this is for the second half of 2020. We have play, which this is kind of the essence of Leo energy anyway. It's that childlike play, that big hearted innocence, like not knowing any better but to play. So make sure you use that to your advantage. That's kind of the, the energetic blueprint that you can weave in for yourself and just make the most out of the rest of the year. And then we have the orphan. So the word that's coming up is separation. And by separation, I mean the illusion of separation because separation isn't actually a thing. It's something that we project onto situations based on wounding, based on whatever past experiences we've had, so on and so forth. And so the orphan archetype is reminding you and it's teaching you that you, you haven't been abandoned. You're not going to abandon yourself. This is not something where just because you might be projecting rejection or projecting loss or projecting whatever onto a situation or trying to forecast that into the future. It's not an indication that it's going to happen. So there's there's something to learn from the illusion of separation here, the illusion of loss, the illusion of abandonment. There's work to be done here. And then we also have initiate, just get started. A beginning only takes a moment. Assign yourself the title now. Choose to align with the joyful discovery that awaits you on the journey ahead. Okay, so take action. Do it. Get it started. And it, it's kind of like act as if it's already happening. That's the energy of this. Now let's go ahead and dive into the timeline. So this first quarter for you, let's see what it has in store. Three of Cups. This is lots of time with friends. A again, that play energy, I think you actually get to tap into that um, going into mid-August. So it's kind of like you're just thriving in your season. Let's see what else is going on here. We have the Eight of Pentacles. This is also a really intense work time for you. So professional goals, personal goals, anything that you aspire to do or that you are looking to build and take action on, this is going to be a time when you can actually create that. Maybe there is some balancing and recalibrating between like work and play, understanding how those two things are woven together and how you want to juggle both of those things or hold both of those things at the same time, whatever that may be. This could also be a time of building relationships as well is the other thing that I'm getting here. So maybe if you've been exclusively work focused, then it might be time to uh, 
make make room and space for yourself to just enjoy and play and be present with whatever connections feel really good to you and in alignment with you. The second quarter is the Queen of Swords. So this is doing things your way. Let me pull this next card just to get a better idea of what is going on here. Ace of Cups. Okay, so this is love, overflow, self-care. Perhaps there's a need for space or incubation or independence in order to fill your cup. This is also about you reminding yourself that your own needs are precious. Your own desires are really important for you to listen to, for you to connect with, for you to be present with. This is reminding you that you don't actually pour from your full cup, you pour from your saucer. So that's the, the main theme that is coming up here. Be really careful with overextension because this is encouraging you to do the opposite. This is saying you might want to choke back on how much you're committing to or how much time you're giving other people, how much energy you're giving other people. Make sure that you're only pouring from the saucer, not directly from your cup, if that makes sense. So that that's kind of the name of the game. So you're going to have to see how that plays out for you, how that is a focus for you or how you can integrate that. But I think if you if you just prioritize your own well-being, that's going to give you the best results. We need to make that a practice all the time. In reality, we want to stay self-focused. That way we don't experience burnout, but that's not always realistic. So just bear in mind that this is kind of the name of the game, but it's okay if you're not executing that perfectly. You know, it's give, give yourself some grace as well. Third quarter, we have the Four of Swords, time for rest, time for, you know, if you, if you aren't doing this work here, it's definitely gonna come up in that third quarter. Let me see what else is happening here. Ten of Swords. I kinda wanna pull one more for you because I am curious what this, like what is being released or what is, what is moving out? What are you recovering from? Oh, okay. There's something, there's like a big change happening here. This, this actually has a lot less to do with, uh, loss. Don't think about this as loss in this third quarter. No, 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 no. That's not actually what's happening here. The four of swords has to do with you integrating and downloading all of the wisdom and information that you've been receiving, I think whatever has been going on or whatever growth period you've been experiencing, this is integration time. Now, with these two cards, the Fool is telling me that you have initiated or started something that is new, fresh, vibrant. It's, it's the new version and expression of yourself. It's your new journey, new experience. It's the new new expression, new chapter. In order for you to move forward and be that version of yourself, the old version has to die. That's a necessary part. You can't move into the future doing the same exact thing and being the exact same way and expecting a different result. So in order for you to get to that next level, you have to actually let the old structure die. So this is a major shedding skin growth period in this third quarter. And I think it does have to do with you learning about taking care of your needs, pouring from the saucer, giving to yourself, doing things in a way that feel good to you and are right for you and aligned with you. It's making way for this new experience, this tipping point where you actually jump off and fly. That's that's what I'm getting here. So don't be afraid of the Ten of Swords. This actually looks a lot better when I clarified with the Fool. So it, this is a choice. This is a decision that you've made and something that you're engaging in. So it, it's not it's not by force. This isn't a tower moment where you get blindsided. This has to do with 
you actually deciding to jump off the cliff and jump into the next level. And so you have to become that person who breaks through into the next level. So you're becoming is the name of the game here. And you might feel like you need extra rest because you are evolving into a completely new expression of yourself. It's like there's there's things living here that you haven't experienced before. And the fourth quarter wrapping up 2020, we have the nine of cups, wishes fulfilled, dreams coming true, satisfaction. This is all good things coming through with that nine of cups. There's, I mean... What more could you ask for? That's a great way to end 2020, but let's see. King of Wands. Mastery. That And this is your king, right? Your, your king, the fire king. So, ask and you shall receive. It's like there's a whole world that's opening up at the end of 2020 and extending into 2021. So you're, th this middle portion here is deep learning, deep growth, deep evolution. And this is where you actually make it to an even more satisfying level of experiencing life, experiencing your being. And it seems like you're also really in your flow, feeling like yourself, feeling good about yourself, honoring yourself. All of these themes are coming up. So you get to look forward to this, but know that in order for you to get to that really satisfying place, you have to be that person who attains that thing that you're trying to shift into and make happen. It's kind of like if you want more money, okay, you need to be the person who makes more money. Okay, you want more love, you have to be the person who receives more love, it, so on and so forth. So you, you just have to remind yourself that you're actually in charge and you have to let the old defenses fall away so that you can actually break through. Okay, I am going to do August now. So this is your August of 2020. We're just going to keep it simple, keep it basic. I have the central energy, what you have shifting out, and then what the oncoming energy is. We're just going to keep it straightforward. The central energy for you in August is the Four of Chalices. So lots of contemplation. This is also you evaluating what's on your plate. What do you want more of? Like, what do you actually want to invite in? What do you want to close the door on? You're marinating on things. It just looks like very slow decision-making figuring out hmm, what are my priorities, what are my desires, because there nothing is actually happening. It's not an action-packed card. It's quiet, solitude, contemplation. It's I'm figuring this out. I'm getting curious with it. And this is going to serve you. In, in what capacity, I don't know, but you have to just go into August knowing that evaluating what you have energy for, what you need more or less of, what you have room for reasonably with the energy that you have, what you want to invite in. Look in all those nooks and crannies and just marinate on, is this right for me or not? What you have shifting out is the Nine of Wands. This to me, it looks like there was a, a really intense push, go, go, go. There's rushing energy here. It's kind of like tripping over yourself. You're moving so fast. And so, of, of course, when you're, when you're needing to hustle, grind, push, force, anything like that, when there, when there are really intense periods of high energy output, of course, then you're going to have a come down. You're going to have a period where things do get more quiet so you can actually see what what is it that you're wanting or doing next. What What's the next expression? And then the oncoming energy is the hanged man. So stability. This is something that I, I think you're probably welcoming. You might be wanting to break out of busyness or 
having a lot of people kind of tugging at your energy or whatever you have going on or the the 80,000 projects or 80,000 irons in the fire. And so you're you're getting to this space where consistency and stability is the direction that you're moving if that's what you desire. Just understand that things can be as consistent and stable and secure as you allow them. It is a practice. It's an energetic pattern that you hold in your body. So you have to practice that and exercise that just like you would a muscle. Now we're going to do a three card pick. So you're welcome to ask a question, ask for guidance, clarity, support. Pick as few or as many cards as you'd like. If you need more time, pause the video. Card number one, we have experience. I think this is the chariot, if I remember correctly. One, the, the, okay, there, there's a couple things coming up with this card. You need to look back at experiences that you've already had and things that you've already done and use that wisdom. Like, don't, don't look at something and ignore the experiences that you've already had. Now, depending on what you're needing more or less of in your life, you might also want to go after new experiences or put yourself in new positions, in new challenges, and just allowing yourself to expand into that growth. So you need to if you're in the same cycle or the same situation, you need to listen to the experiences and wisdom that you've already had. If you're not having new experiences, if you're at a plateau, if you're stagnating, then you need to open yourself up to new experiences. That's how I would weed that out. That gets kind of the solution or the remedy here. Card number two, we have the whore. This is the empress, technically. Divine feminine, get really good at receiving. Receptive energy is kind of the, the name of the game here. And so if you can work on the feminine polarity that you hold that and work on healing that, wielding that in the right ways, th there's medicine and magic in that, so use it. Card number three, we have the crone. This is the hermit. So you need to take some time. Find your own light with all of this. You already have it. You just need to get quiet enough to hear it. You have the wisdom. You just have to get to a place where you can access that. So meditation, again, contemplation, like with that four of cups that was in the center of the August reading. It's that same energy of wait and see, slow down with your decision-making process, go, go in and get curious about it. Okay, and then the bonus card for you for Leo season. Let's see what's going on. Ace of Pentacles. Ask first. This is like an ask and you shall receive card. So in order to get that thing or have that new experience, you have to ask first. This is a closed mouth won't get fed. Don't expect the delivery of something that you haven't decided you get to have, that you haven't decided to call in. So there is a lot of emphasis on initiation, like what we had over here. Initiate by asking and deciding asking God, universe, divine source, but also deciding this is what I'm calling in. This is what I'm creating because you, it, you're you constantly in a state of creation. So use it, ask for it, call it in, know you're supported. Thank you so much for joining me today, everybody. It's been an absolute pleasure. And before you go, make sure you subscribe, like this video, and leave a comment if anything resonated. Check me out on Instagram at Onyx Healing. And if you would like more content from me, make sure you sign up for my newsletter. Good things come to you in my newsletter, and you can stay up to date on everything. 
all of the info that you need is in the description box if you'd like to work with me or check out all of the other offers that I have just check below. All of the decks that I've used in the reading today are also listed as well. I'm sending you so much love and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.